The Zucks just dropped a quarter billion dollars on a 24 year old whiz kid. Here's why this matters. But before that, this is a good headline. We have reached the climax of revenge of the nerds. That is pretty good actually. So 250 mil for this kid's brain. Why? Meta we know is moving everything into AI as everybody else is. And they're being smart about it because they're literally gonna gobble up the best of the best of the best. This includes the technology, this includes the whiz brains of these kids. But if you look one step forward, what Zuck's trying to do, he's trying to bring AI to the masses, which is us, the users. And he absolutely is the one unicorn, but in the end, we're all going to benefit from this because now we're gonna get better technology that's going to unite us and not separate us. I don't you know, subscribe to the kind of doomsday scenario. I really do believe that all this technology is going to help us. It's gonna help the creators, the builders, the businesses, because in the end, what does Meta do? They run ads. They want you to spend money on ads. And if you can use AI to do that so they can make many, many, many trillions of dollars, that's what they're gonna do. A that's facts. What's going on? I'm Tech Bag Trey, your favorite cousin on your mama's side. And today we are talking about this 25 year, 24 year old kid that just told Mark Zuckerberg that his hundred and twenty five million dollar offer was a low ball offer. All right. Let me say that again for the people in the back. He called one hundred and twenty five million dollars low ball. And y'all already know what happened next because this guy just explained it. But yeah, um, Mark flew out, personally met with the guy, and then ended up doubling the offer. So instead of $125 million, he got a $250 million contract and 100 mil of it, he gonna get paid out in the first year alone. So guaranteed contract. <laughs> and now I'm thinking in my mind like, yo, Either this is one of the craziest higher stories in tech history or just in history in general, or like this is a sign that we're living in a completely different world than I thought of. And I need to unlock my mind and go in a little deeper on who this guy is. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to dig deep. So I went, tried to find some who is this kid, right? So. I, I was like, basically, I needed to know who just turned down generational wealth, right? And had so much confidence in his skills and his ability that he knew, right? Like, and obviously it wasn't bluffing because it worked. Now, his name was is Matt Dickey or Dikey. Um, I really don't know how to say it. If y'all know how to say it, put it down in the comments. But at the end of the day, seemed like a regular degular guy. Okay. From what I'm reading here, he was born in 2001, Chicago. Nothing special. Uh, from what I read, he spent a lot of hours really uh, early on colorizing thick pictures in Photoshop like any other kid during that time. Like, right. Well, not any other kid, but really doing stuff that they found interesting. And that's all they cared about. Right. But he said he found something that clicked and he found out that AI could automate the entire process that he was doing. And so basically, and quote, I was completely amazed it felt like I was experiencing pure magic, right? Like kind of like everybody else is feeling right now with AI now. Like if you use it, you're like, oh snap, like this feel like some stuff that I shouldn't be able to do right now. You know what I mean? Um, but ultimately he was doing a bunch of boring Photoshop work, but he then found out that he was looking at the future, right? Which is what we all should be thinking right now when we're looking at AI, right? So, you know, even right now, how everybody feels like they're looking at it as some scary abstract thing, right? AI, he saw it as a problem solver. And what I realized and what I saw in this is I'm like, there's a path you got to go on after you get off of the normal kid stuff, right? Like you got to get on the I'm about my business track. <laughs> I'm done being childish, put away childish thing, right? So he did this. Now, while other people were thinking about college, he ended up joining something called the Allen Institute for AI straight out of high school at 18 years old, right? Now, you're able to do this type of stuff when you really know what you want to do and you're able to streamline your path. So he was able to go in not as an intern, not as a student helper, but as a legitimate researcher. He came through that thing, right? So by sophomore in college, he was already a full time researcher. So while these other students are taking intro courses and trying to figure out the major that they're about to go into, right? 
he's already publishing papers, uh, working next to the top AI minds in the world, right? What I'm getting out of that, proximity. Like, you can't beat proximity. Like, when you're around the right people, soaking in the right stuff, it just kind of oozes off on you, right? <laughs> right? So 2022, this guy uh, ends up winning the Outstanding Paper Award, like uh, something called the Neuro IPS. Like, I have no clue. I'm not that smart, right? Like, I'm a regular, regular guy, but I'm trying to figure it out. That's why I went through this guy's story. But anyway, <clears throat> if you don't know, which I didn't, this is basically like winning the Oscars in AI. Right, like they only give this out to around 12 researchers out of every 10,000 submissions. So again, not some regular degular smart guy like operating at elite levels, right? In base in the AI game and research. Okay. So again, like when you're operating in the thing that you're supposed to be doing, that God put you on this planet for, but the thing that comes easy to you but hard to others you get to operate at elite levels um, at ease, right? So th this is what I'm getting out of as I'm going through this 24-year-old kid's story. But here's what really caught Meta's attention that led to, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. This is what got their attention, right? So he worked and worked on what's something called Malmo. Um, it was a chat bot. It could process uh, audio, video, all of this stuff at the same time. This is the type of technology that Meta was needing and that they do need to be able to compete with OpenAI and Google. But now here's where the, the business move and all this rejection came in, all right? So we're talking November, 2024, Matt ended up making another bet on himself, right? So he co-founds this startup called Vericep and they raised like $16.5 million from investors, including former Google CEO, Eric Smith. Now y'all, all right. He went from being a researcher to being an entrepreneur with some big time backing, right? Now, remember what I said earlier about proximity. Like when you are in the proximity with the right people, like money tends to come a little bit easier to you. Opportunities tend to come a little easier to you, right? <clears throat> and it really, it's like a cheat code to be honest, I'm not even gonna cap. So you know you got to look around right now and find these people that you're hanging around with on the on the everyday basis and all this stuff and you're doing the same thing and it's not amounting to nothing like is that what you really want to be doing for the rest of your life if it's not you might want to make a move because i'm gonna be honest he did he he made it right right and it's paying off big time i mean we're talking about it right now so meta came right they came knocking on the door the initial offering was $125 million over four years. Now, this is this is a sports contract, basically, y'all. 125 M's, not just any sport either. That's that's a baseball contract. Big, big baseball money. All right. 125 million over four years. Are y'all taking that? I would have took it with the quickness. Like, like ain't no questions asked where I signed that, man. What you mean I need to move to Mars, man? No, nah, I'm playing. <clears throat> I, I'm not I'm not selling my soul for uh, nothing. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, for other people, y'all y'all know like anybody else get this offer, this retiring the family. Everybody get yachts. You know what I mean? Kick back with me. No, nah, I'm playing. Y'all know that they'll be back in the hood doing stuff like that in two years. But no, he <clears throat> really he saw it though. Low ball offer. I know what I bring to the table. Do you? So obviously they did, right? But they didn't know what to do. So they brought in the big gun. They brought in Mark Zuckerberg, right? And he personally flew out on the private jet, all right, on the PJ to go meet Matt. They sat down, they were able to discuss like all the visions and what they had for uh, what Mark Zuckerberg was trying to do for AI and all this stuff. Mark cut the check, man. He doubled the offer, $250 million. Now Matt was like, all right, now you talking, you talking my language. What a dotted line at? I'm we good. Right? So, anyways, y'all, I, I went through, I analyzed this story, and, and I was just like, yo, how is this 24-year-old getting a $250 million bag off his brain? And um, this is why all this stuff matters. And 
I do have three lessons that uh, that we could possibly get from his journey that he got, you know, um, from this bag. But before I get to that, I did want to talk about what it meant. OK, because this is not just about one kid getting rich. Right. Like Meta is spending 72 billion dollars on infrastructure in 2025 alone. That's a billion with a B. OK, now they, they reportedly spent just one billion dollars just assembling the AI team. So while they're throwing these crazy numbers out at all these people, they're not the only ones like. But they also laid off 10,000 workers this year. Like I was literally just talking about the layoffs not too long ago. So you, know, you enter a spot where it's like we're letting people go so that we could build this mega team over here. Now, they're not saying that, but come on now. Come on, this is some crazy contracts. Like that's a big expense, and the money gotta come from somewhere. Now they got it, but also don't forget, publicly traded company, you gotta make the shareholders happy as well. And it's not something that a lot of people think about. But at the end of the day, y'all, th this is the new reality. Okay. Now a lot of people they worried about AI and AI taking a job. Like, yes, that is a possibility. But people like Matt, who see this stuff coming. Or at least they're looking at it like, okay, instead of taking my job, I'm going to see how I can use it to my advantage. Now, he did it at the highest level, not cap. Everybody ain't getting 250 mil because they know something about AI in the industry that they in. But you can get a bag, right? You can stay employed. So the question is not really if AI is going to change anything. It's like which side of the equation are you going to be on, right? Are you going to be on the getting laid off with the severance package? eighteen hundred dollars for every year that you've been here as long as you've been here five years that's that's what ups just did right i just did a video on ups where they uh got the ai trucks and the the loaders the ai loaders ready to go or you can be on the side like matt right now we we're gonna give you the bag because you understand how to use ai in the industry you're in so anyways real quick um the three lessons that i got out of this one Number one, find out how to use the AI in the industry or the space that you already work in, that you already have experience in, right? Like that's going to help you in the long run. Number two, go all in when other people are just watching on the sideline. Like It doesn't matter what your friends say, what your family say. If you got something that you believe in, um, you know, like it's going to attract other people. They're going to be able to feel that energy. And at, and at the end of the day, man, your friends and family, like they see you on a different light. Like you look like little Jimmy, right? Or that, that's little Ava over there. I've been knowing her since she was a baby. Like they don't see you like other people do. So don't even worry about that. Put your head down, put the blinders on, get to work. And number three, build the leverage before you need it. Like this guy, Matt, the reason he could walk away from the 125 mil is because he had alternatives. I don't need you. You need me. And that's the attitude he had, right? Now, it wasn't necessarily in an arrogant way, but it was reality. Now, how we know that? He ended up getting $250 million instead. Now, uh, this, this also works in everyday life. You go to a bank and you, you get the personal line of credit before you need it. Because when you do need it, they're not giving it to you. Period. Anyway, make sure you go ahead and like this video for the algorithm. Uh, don't forget. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Send this video to somebody who you know needs to see it. And I will see you in the next one, baby.